talk about the two metrics. We've got a key risk indicator and quantifiable measure to be able to track and assess the status of a specific risk. Okay, so there's a couple things in there. One is it is quantifiable. So this is not meant to be a word measure, a soft metric, something that's difficult to actually measure. We need to be able to quantify something. The other is that this is about um, a specific risk, which means it is not meant to cover two, three, four, five, six risks all at once. Um, it is possible that based on what risk you're talking about, you may be able to multitask a specific um, metric, but it is not the intended purpose. Okay. So then if we do a key performance indicator, now we're talking about still quantifying, but we're talking about being able to track business functions or a process. So there is a reason why these are two separate things. And why we want to go over them is because sometimes it can be a challenge to come up with a key risk indicator. Um, so we're going to talk through some elements around why should you use metrics, but then we're going to we're going to compare and contrast these two, um, but also talk about a, a certain characteristic that you need to understand that will help you as you determine what metrics are what. So, um, so why should you use a metric? So one, you need to be able to monitor um, the risks and as close to real time as possible. And that's when looking at that characteristic that we're gonna be talking about is gonna be very important. Um, you don't want to understand the status of a risk six months or a year later, if there's a way that you can monitor it as close as possible. You want to be able to detect problems as part of an early warning system. So using it to um, see trends, trends are so, so helpful to be able to see what direction is something moving in so that you can know if you need to take action or the organization needs to take action to address it before the trend continues to get worse. Um, you want to practice proactive risk management. You do not want to be reactive. And reactive is meaning that you're going to have the risk trigger before you do anything. Well, what about if you knew that it was the situation was maybe coming to a head before it actually did because of the indicators that you were using? That is proactive. Fantastic. Um, it does allow you to benchmark with your peers. I will say that this is not about, quote, best practices. This is about benchmarking just to understand, well, this is where we are. Where are our peers on this metric? Whether that is competitors or that is someone of a specific size or that is uh, a publicly traded company versus a privately owned company versus a governmental entity versus a nonprofit, doesn't matter. But finding, you know, what is your peer group? And then you can have conversations to say, we're tracking this metric, where are you? Um, kind of thinking, getting that understanding. Also, it helps provide um, objectivity when you're talking about risk with the business. It is not perceived as risk is blowing things out of proportion, um, but it also helps level set when you're talking with the business so that you can gently push back if you feel like they're blowing things out of proportion. Metrics are very objective, um, which not to be confused with you're trying to achieve an objective, um, meaning it's totally unbiased if you are gathering the right risks and, uh, or sorry, the right metric for risk, and you're making sure that you're not purposely skewing. That goes into some, some more advanced stuff that we'll get into. Um, but it also helps you Yay! Identify opportunities to pursue more positive stuff. And that is an element that I want us to really focus on is it's not just about identifying negative. It is also about identifying those opportunities. So um, we need to keep that in mind um, when we have our metrics. Now, 
there are so many different approaches to how you can um, use metrics in your risk program. I want to say this very straight up. There is no one right way to use metrics. You can use them in so many different forms that it, it is difficult to prescribe or recommend that companies should do it this way. Instead, it is more about having um, some good rules of thumb when determining how to create your metrics. So one is don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. The reason why I say that is a lot of people think we need to get like two or three metrics per risk. Well, then when you start thinking about having to not just identify those metrics, now you're having to collect the data for them. You're having to ensure that you've got good quality data, look at the trends, analyze them, report out on them. Are you prepared to be able to sustain that activity? Right. So, I mean, you need to think about that. The other is, are you just muddying the waters um, with how you're going to get the risk and the metric information? Muddying the waters is never good because you can't see information clearly if it's muddy. So make sure that there is a direct correlation between the metric that you identify and the risk that you are associating it with. Now, if we are also going to talk about the positive aspects of things, I will say that um, a lot of people focus on we have a risk and we need to create a risk metric. I personally love using performance metrics as my risk metrics. And the reason there's several reasons why. One is the business is already familiar with them. You don't have to explain how to read a metric. When you're using metrics, they already use in the business. Two, it simplifies the data collection and monitoring of it because the business is already using the information. Two, it is truly embedding risk into the day-to-day conversations and decision making for resource allocation when risk is part is using the business information so that is my preferred way it's also a lot easier to explain to be honest um kind of going back to that case study from last week so totally different ways but one of the key things to think about which we're about to talk about, is a very specific characteristic that is associated with whether or not you decide to use a performance metric as a KPI versus a risk indicator is that you can have a lagging indicator versus a leading indicator. Now, let's compare and contrast those two because they make a huge difference. So a lagging indicator is focused on the historical aspects. It is truly only going to be looking at the past to see what has been done. What, But it is very accurate in measuring the actual business impact. Um, so if you are trying to understand where have we been with regards to a risk so you can see the true trend, lagging is great. However, if you're wanting to use that as a metric to see whether or not a mitigation or control is effective, because it is historical, it's not looking towards the future, right? So your viewpoint is going to be here and not here where we can see a broader view. So it's not going to give you that good timely feedback when it comes to that. However, when it comes to leading indicators, it is predictive of the future. It does give you some early indicators of performance. Um, and it helps you keep track, keep on track because of the design of those metrics. Now, there's some benefits and some weaknesses for each one. So let's go through those. So on your lagging side, you've got the fact that it is a clear indicator of success. Now, one thing I do want to say is you'll see the X's are the weaknesses, the, the benefits, right? Just because there are more weaknesses on the lagging side 
does not mean you should not use them, okay? They are a good metric for the success indicators of the past. We did this and look at the results. We have very clear indicators of results. And to be honest, that is what a lot of performance metrics are going to be, performance indicators. Indicators. Your KPIs are going to be a lot of lagging metrics. On the leading side, though, you've got faster feedback because you're look. It's they're early indicators, which means that if you think about a risk from we have a risk around you know losing key people. Um, so traditionally, the the first metric we think about is, well, we need to look at our turnover. Well, that's going to be your lagging. It's not, it's not a success, but it does truly um, look at where, what has been our history in that. However, it doesn't allow you to see the root cause of the outcome. Like, why? Why is that number the way that it is? You have to start breaking it down and start figuring out, well, how can we try to predict our turnover or the fact that people are going to leave so that we can make some changes? So that's when you can start saying, well, we can look at our employee engagement. We can look and see, are we struggling with um, getting complaints around our pay or our benefits program or our remote work status? You know, are there, you know, what are the factors that are influencing people? Do we not have good investment in our people so that they want to stay? Do we not focus on career progression? Maybe it's certain management. Are we having a clump of people leaving in certain areas of the organization so that we need to look at what is the management of that section of the business? That's how you need to separate out lagging versus leading. Okay. But just be mindful that if you're using a leading indicator as a proxy for your lagging, it's not going to work because they are used for two different purposes. So um, when it comes to this, uh, the use of these metrics, let me talk through a couple uh, case studies here. And I want to be mindful of time. So um, one, believe it or not, so last week I talked about the case study um, for risk appetite where we use threshold and limits. All of the metrics that we used in that case study, they were all per key performance indicators. You heard it right. We did not use key risk indicators. We used performance indicators. Now, some of them were very much on the lagging side, but then some of them were leading indicators because we were looking towards um, how are they going to be, uh, you know, one of their um, metrics was around, we need to get, uh, expand the business and grow from a corporate perspective. And one way to grow was through acquisition, joint ventures, partnerships, that type of thing. We've got a bucket of money. How are we going to allocate that money? And so as they were, um, so one of those metrics that we used was how are they allocating it and, and using the use of those funds? That's not a historical, that's a projection of how do they um, prorate it out across the different type of investments they wanted to get um, and do. So that is one case study. The other case study is thinking about, um, well, we had a company where we um, were using um, key risk metrics um, to track things. And this is where you've got the, the things that went wrong, right? Is the data got overcomplicated on the client side and trying to track all of the data meant that they were so far behind and trying to keep up with it that the data just became stale, all right? So that's another piece to think about. If you start getting too many or you've um, 
or you don't have clear indicators of who should I be contacting and reaching out to those people on a regular basis, your data is just going to become stale and it's not going to be useful to anybody. And then a third case study is there was a company that um, had identified a whole bunch of risk indicators, but because they didn't think about some key questions around, is this information already available? How can we get access to it? Is it trustworthy? Does it have data integrity? All those different components that come with idea of using data, they had thought really, really big and generic, well, not generic, sorry, really big picture to try to come up with some really great leading indicators, but they thought way too far out without saying, well, how can we actually get this data? So while they thought that they were so far ahead of the curve, um, they actually weren't because trying to actually gather that information and use it on a regular basis, you know, yeah, it sounded great on paper. This is going to be linked to this risk. It'll be great. Definitely a leading indicator and, and it's an external data source. So it's not, you know, going to be using our data, be good. But they didn't think about how can we get that data? How often is it updated? Who do we reach out to, et cetera, et cetera. So be very mindful 